Hello everybody and welcome and welcome to basic build uh, number two. Now a quick apology because this video should have been started a long time ago but unfortunately just before Christmas my good lady fell down some steps, uh, broke a number of bones in her foot which left me to be chief cook, bottle washer and maid and uh, didn't give me much time to actually get to the bench and get things sorted but we're at the bench now and so we're going to get started with this build so what's the plan of build well the plan of build is it's going to be a very straightforward barn but the barn is going to be cut away so you can actually see what's going on inside now this is going to be a build from start to finish it's going to be uh, vehicles are going to be put in figures so you see the whole lot from start to finish so my plan is to build a barn, use just a gable end to start off with, and then a side wall, completely well, to enclose it, and then this end here is, is going to be another gable end. The front half of it is going to be just sort of corbelled down and a very low wall along the front and back up this side. The roof is going to be the same, that's going to be cut back down like so. That is going to give you the view inside of the barn. It's not going to be destroyed, it's just going to be a cutaway. Now it's going to have a solid back wall, solid roof on that half and also what I'm going to do is introduce a hayloft entrance at the front and one at the back. This means I can actually put a floor which will be cut away right the way through. So this is giving me loads of options. I can actually put uh, troops up the top here. Down the bottom here there's going to be a vehicle. I'm not quite sure what vehicle I'm going to be putting in there yet. I'm hoping a panther. It's going to be halfway in and terrible drawing of the panther. Yeah, I've got, got the exhaust pipes. It's going to be halfway in, halfway out, uh, and what I would like is an A-frame with some German guys working on the engine, and actually fill this up with uh, supplies, um, mechanics, bits and pieces. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's going to be the build. Now I'm going to keep the build down to straightforward panels i.e. then panels now it's going to be four panels long and it's going to be two and a quarter panels wide I'm working it in panels for the simple reason is it will make it easier when we get to the top to work out the uh, timbers for the joists and everything else like that so that's the way well that is what i'm going to be building so with that i'm going to put you on pause i'm going to get set up and we'll get started on bricks now i'm going to get started on the gable end the gable end that i'm actually going to start on is the gable with the two big barn doors in and also above the main barn there's going to be a smaller door in the wall well hayloft door should i say on that sort of line so th this is the main one that I'm going to get started on first now in the last clip I did say my sizes were going to be four panels uh, long that's the length of the barn and two and a quarter panels wide now uh, two and a quarter panels wide it, we're going to go two and a quarter pan or two panels and we need a quarter now this is where I bring in a different uh, brick section now this comes from brick piers uh, it's a mold that actually makes brick piers and out the mold you actually get that's a broken one you actually get a three a two and a one so you get a nice selection of different sizes now these do interlock to make up brick piers or you can use these to make up quarter panels. Now, what I should be doing to start off with is the width 
that I require is roughly two and a quarter. So if we use uh, two of those, that's almost a quarter. That's the reason why I said a quarter-ish. So that's going to be the actual width of my barn. And now I'm going to also use these uh, to actually construct the sides as well. So I'll actually be using these, we'll lay it out, down the side to create our opening. We'll do the same that side even though we're not, uh, I'm not gluing them. So that's the way I'm actually going to lay it out. So I've got two sections in the middle. That means because I've used them sections that I've still got teeth at the end so I could still interlock the sides and go up higher if I required. But it's, I'm using them because it's just going to make me a lot less cuts. So to start off with we're actually going to assemble this in two halves so we'll dispose of that and we'll turn this over like so. So this is going to be my first half which I'm going to glue together, uh, glue there and there, leave it to dry for a little while because then we'll be laying pieces over the top. But I'll get that done and then I'll come back to you and we'll run through that. Now I've glued these pieces together and also I thought it'd be very rude not to actually make the other side which is just a mirror image. So we've got them pieces now all glued and ready for the next step. Now we need to actually back uh, these two piers up either side. Now if we use a full piece like so we have to set, set this back like that uh, to accept the next piece which I'm not going to do for the simple reason is if I do it that way it's going to mess up the finish on this edge. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to clip off. I should quickly do it. Clip off. Sorry, I'll do this off camera for some reason they're shooting all over the place. I should clip all the teeth off and actually bring the bricks level with each other. Now that's still going to allow me to get my front section in but it's also going to help on when I put the next panel on on the inside that I can actually cut it back and align my bricks because I want this to to be a cutaway and not destroyed so I want all the bricks nice and even and neat so what I'm going to do now in great Blue Peter fashion I've already uh, made or cut my pieces that I need to go on either side which is two pieces one cut in half and that will bring me to the level of that panel. So what I'm going to do now, I'll get these glued on and these glued on and then we'll come back and we'll get on with the lintel. I've had a little bit of time to dry and while I was waiting I actually, if I can carefully pick that up, I actually removed the two top bricks and just sanded it back. Now this is going to make a hole for the actual lintel. Now the lintel, if we put these centre pieces back in, so we've got a panel and a quarter, so we just need to measure up a piece of balsa wood. Now this piece of balsa wood is 7mm by 9mm, nothing too mad, and all I've done, it's rather grubby and dirty now, but all I've done is just scored it out roof the fronts up to make it look like uh, an old piece of timber. Now that's going to be glued in there. Now I'm going to glue it this end, that end, to this panel and to this panel. I'm not going to be gluing it to these two centre panels. The reason is the door that's going to be taken out and that's going to be used as the uh, hayloft door. So but we will get to that in a few minutes. So what I'm gonna do now is glue this in. So it's only gonna to be to that panel and that panel. 
not this one, and to the two ends. So I'll glue that up, give it a chance to dry, and then I should be back to you. Now the lintel's been glued in to them two panels and to the ends, but not to the middle ones. And it really needs a good while to really dry off because the simple reason is it is very delicate. I've used my square to make sure everything's nice and square and well, so it's all nice and square. That's the main thing. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start infilling these bits on the inside. Now, the way I'm gonna be doing that is very simple. These parts, you get them in the uh, panels. You get to, uh, one of these each end of your mold. And also, they do actually come in the uh, brick pier mold as well. And what we're gonna do is literally just cut them down. Uh, so when they fit in that way, all we're gonna do is that's going to be upside down, isn't it? We're going to need a different one. Uh, let's get this around the right way. All right, we'll have to take that top one off, no problems. So, we're going to infill like that. So, all we need to do is go along with the clippers, just clip them back. I'll do the first one so you can understand which way I'm going. So we've got a piece like that which will go and then go face down and get glued into that place there. And we do it the same, two pieces, the next one goes on top. We'll do that one as well. You can overlap them if you wish. It's totally up to you. I will just put them in as they fit. So we'll just cut that one, like so. And then that one will go on there, get glued into place, pushed right in. And that will infill these two sides. And also that will give me the inside for my door frame, which we'll be doing next. So I'll get on, get the rest of these cut, fitted, then I'll come back to you and we'll have a look at the door frame. Now I've put the bits to fill the inside of the uh, door barn door should I say so they're all in tucked in nice and neatly now and we're ready to move on to actually put a door frame on now before we move on to uh, about the door frame I just want to point out uh, if you haven't noticed that on the brick panels you do have a little tiny mortar joint now it's very very easy to actually get the two mortar joints on top of each other and that means then you actually get a no gap at the top and you get a larger gap at the bottom. Uh, I just wanted to point that out so you're aware of it. So when you do, you rotate it so you've got your mortar joints equally all the way through. So that was that. So on now to the actual uh, door frame. And you're probably gonna be asking the reason why I'm putting be putting a door frame in at this early stage. I really want to stabilize up this bottom half. The frame isn't going to be anything uh, too mad. Uh, just some pieces of timber we're going to run around the inside like so just to make a frame up and then we're going to put some stabilizing bars or some sacrificial bars through to hold everything in place so this bottom half is reasonably solid. When we come further on, we can actually, if we need to double these up uh, to make the timbers thicker, we shall, but we won't worry about that at the moment. So what I'm gonna do now is just cut some timber, and I didn't tell you the size of the timber, which I can't remember the size of the timber. Uh, what's the size of the timber? Uh, that is 2.5, by 5.5 so that's what I'm going to do now so I'm going to get that cut and get that glued in and then I'll come back to it I've glued the frame in brilliant stuff now what I want to do is I actually want to sort of uh, just try and stabilize it up a little bit more so what I've done I've cut a piece of wood for that side a piece of wood 
for that side just to try and keep everything square and also a piece of wood for the bottom I all I'm going to do now is just with a bit of PVA glue just glue them down put a couple of pins in and leave this now for a few hours and then I'll come back to it right this bit has been sat overnight I've had a little tidy up on my bench and now we move on to the actual gable itself now we're working in panels so we've actually got two panels here that's going to be the height of our building and that is going to be the level that the roof comes to as well where the actual roof sits on now I've already drawn a line there but to get that line what I've done I've used one piece of timber as a, a wall plate which would be running all the way around and then on top of the wall plate the joist would sit so second piece of timber comes into play now then two pieces of timber if you draw a line across that is now going to give you the level of your floor inside the barn and also it, it shows me how many courses of bricks I need to put on top of the lintel before I put the door in so that is that point there and it, it what's it four courses so four courses of bricks I know it's just slightly under four courses but by the time we actually get the floorboard in on that will bring it up to four courses so next thing to do is I'm going to change the position and we'll get on and we'll sort this bit out okay rotated it around put a piece of cling film down so I can start gluing we're simply going to lift that up and move them brick sections out of the way now we've got a mark to put four courses so very simply we'll cut them across we get the fingers out of the way one two three four courses we'll just cut across them bits like that and snap them off like so and we're just going to glue them back in place round the right way hopefully yeah, we've got that one goes there so we'll, I'll just glue this bit in I'll bore you to death so we're just going to bit of glue on there somewhere on the bottom and we're just going to drop them back into there like so and the same with the other bit along the bottom probably doing this all off shot because I'm not looking at the screen and then we're simply going to drop that bit into there as well make sure there's no glue left on the back because we're going to be putting some back panels on alright that's that bit now I'm going to leave that to dry just for a little while and then we'll come back and we'll carry on with the rest of it now moving on uh, we've cut our four courses at the bottom they're in glued and drying the pieces you actually cut off if we place them in there and one in there like so then we get ourselves two full panels uh, let's turn that around because that's got no broken bit on now what we're going to do is actually glue these two panels on using them as a spacer so I can glue that one on glue this one on put something uh, heavy on it just to hold it in place and leave it to dry so I'm gonna get that done so I'm gonna glue this one glue that one but I'm not gonna glue this part in the middle because we want this left open for our doorway now it's had a bit of time to dry and we're going to remove these center pieces first them. now average door is roughly four courses oh well, sorry four bricks wide uh, we've actually got uh, six here altogether we've got six bricks so that's going to work well so four courses wide and the average about 24 courses high but that isn't sort of written in stone uh, what I've done here I've marked up to 23 courses now 23 courses 
I'm going to require to be putting a lintel in. I've only done it 23 courses because we've got the pitch of the roof and I don't want it to look too stupid. So 23 courses up and that's where I'm going to put a lintel. Now I'm going to cut that piece off there. Uh, that leaves a nice little opening of uh, two courses which if we use our uh, 2.4 by 5.4 uh, timber, glue two pieces together, that will make us a lintel of two courses wide. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to cut that piece off, cut this piece off this side. I'm going to glue two pieces of this together uh, to make my lintel up and then I shall cut it to fit in that gap and I shall be back with you in a second. Okay, I've cut the lintel, fitted the lintel. Uh, next stage is to get two full pieces and we're going to infill this top section so I'm just going to glue these two pieces in and then I should be back again now these two pieces are in they're not fully dry but I can still get on with other bits and pieces now the next thing I need to do is do the infill on the inside of the door now I'm going to do it exactly the same way as what we did it at the bottom here and that's actually get our section to go in snip these teeth back on off and just insert it in and glue it in. Now I'll get on with that. The two inserts I've put in, they're glued in place. Now with them inserts in, it does make it actually four bricks wide and we've got, well, uh, 20, 21 courses high for the door opening. Now, when we get all the back on, we can actually line this up with a door frame. But I'm not going to concern myself with that at the moment. What I need to do now is move on because I need to get some pieces glued on the end here to actually get the pitch of my roof. Now we've already got the centre line and the amount of uh, panels I'm actually bringing it up is about two and, a, two and a quarter somewhere around there. So if I lay that piece of timber there, that piece of timber in there, that is roughly going to be the picture of my roof so we've got a little section at the top here that we need to uh, address put some bits in so we can actually cut the uh, gable in so I'm just going to do that I'm just going to use some scrap pieces and we're going to glue them on at the top there and when I've done that and they're all dry I'll be back to you now I've fitted these bits at the top uh, to make up the height of the gable and if you notice I've glued two small pieces of balsa wood either end this is going to be my wall plate but I've just glued these small pieces in just so I can set up the uh, angle of my roof now the timber that I've used is I can't remember what it is now what is it it's 2.4 by 5.4 and like I say that is going to be my wall plate so what will happen is that the floor joist will go from side to side like that and then the roof trusses will form up this way like that and like that so that will be my actual picture of my roof very straightforward very simple this now can be marked on both sides and then that can be all cut off but Simon being Simon I'm not going to do a gable end where the tiles come over the gable end what I want to do this time is to actually do the tiles that actually butt up to part of the wall so I can do some flashing and then along the top of the wall to actually put a coping and that's going to be very easy uh, to work out as well because all we need to do is put another timber on top of that timber and do the mark all the way along which then will give us the space to actually get our timber and tiles and then this space will allow us to put the flashing on and a coping so you don't actually see any edge of any tile so that's what I'm that's the way I'm going to do it so it's very very easy to set out and work out like I say that's the baseline 
I'm going to take this to just that mark there which is it's one course down and that's the angle I'm going to go at so if you excuse my hands I'm just going to draw a line across there So that's my first mark. And then my second mark from that side, we come just one course down off the top. And then we draw my second line. So that's now given us my pitch. Of, of of the roof now you like I said you can just leave it like that and then put your make your a-frames up and then your tiles will sit over the top which then you can do the cement work and finish it off that way but me being me I'm gonna go for extending that just one bit more on both sides like that. There's the mark. So that's got my pitch sorted out. So what I shall do now is I'm not going to do it now. I'm going to leave this until the morning. I'm just going to get my ruler, straight edge, scalpel and I'm just going to cut that shape out and that's going to be my gable end. Now, I might as well discuss this while, while we're here. This means that we've got to extend this brickwork to actually make everything fit. Now, we I'll show, show you how to do that but uh, a bit later on because we need, actually need the building put together to actually extend this brickwork. But we will extend it into like a corbelling fashion down so this end actually sticks out and covers the whole of the end of the roof uh, it's very similar to what you see on churches and that where they do the front section and then they got like little wings that stick out either side and this normally hides all the guttering and the edge of the roof and it just gives the front a nice finish i shall show you how we do that but like i say that needs the whole building needs to be put together so we can actually do that and fit it on and cut it and make it look the part so that's it i'm going to get this uh, well i'm going to leave this now for a, until tomorrow morning and then i shall get this cut out and i'll be back and we'll have a quick look at uh, what it looks like now i did a uh, straight edge I did quite a few passes up and down at the edge of the gable, stood it up, they broke off no problems at all. So we've actually got our angle, I will stand it up a bit later on uh, and you can have a look front and back. But moving on, now we've got to do is back this up and we're simply going to back it up the same way as we actually built it. The two pieces that you actually cut off of here you can just reverse these round and use these as fill as well and we'll just build that up exactly the same way as we actually built the front up so I'm gonna get on with that I'm gonna get them all glued down all the pieces put in and get the gable uh, cut up the same way I'll just turn it over cut it from the back and break it off so I'll get all that assembled and then I'll come back to you as I promised back with it completed now this is the back uh, I've in done all the infill I've ran uh, some one mil I think it's by about five mil timber just around the inside of the door opening there I've used smaller stuff because you don't really want a thick uh, door liner in there so I've just ran some thin stuff around there just to finish that off all the angles have been cut there is a bit of sanding to be done. Uh, this angle here, it just flicks up a little bit, so I've just got to run the sanding stick along this edge uh, just to complete that up. 
and if we turn it over that is the back side it still needs time to dry that is the front side uh, I think more to say about it it's come out pretty well I'm quite happy with that now my apologies for the length of this video but I did want to get all this finished one gable in this video now the next one coming up we'll be doing the opposite end and the main wall so until then thank you very much and we'll see you on the next one